Hello and welcome to episode 176 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is January 25th and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello everyone. Hi guys. So this week we are going back up the stack. Last week, we covered some cool infrastructure-related topics from Goran. Today, we want to focus on AI again. You might remember that we had um, Nopur, CJ, and also Michael in previous episodes talking about Azure Open AI and how this could be leveraged, for example, in a team spot. Today, we have Michael back with us, and he shows a nice integration of Copal Studio, Azure Open AI, and the new SAP OData connector for Power Automate. So with this, um, welcome, Michael. Yeah. Welcome. Michael, um, for those, I mean, you have been on the show a few times, but um, just to get everyone up to speed, can you quickly introduce yourself? And yeah, then, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so hello again. Thank you, Holger, Robert, for the, for the invite. And uh, yeah, happy to be here again. My name is Michael. I'm Cloud Solution Architect for SAP on Azure. My responsibility is to make sure that customers are successful with their deployments on Azure. And on top of that, I guide them to extend the SAP functionality with Azure services, in the area of data integration, monitoring, sub-security, <laughs> open AI lately, and uh, more and more also with the Power Platform. Perfect. And um, as you said, you you have already done a few things. Um, you you already had, I think, a very very famous, a very popular um, demo uh, with the Teams integration leveraging OpenAI and creating SQL statements. I think that was really really uh, eye opening to a lot of customers partners um, with this. And I think um, today you have an evolution of the integration or a, a different kind of um, integration into the SAP world. Yeah, so I mean, today we can take the opportunity and I can feed back a little bit from the experience I have with, with customers. So um, yeah, quite some customers and also partners um, picked up the ideas and, and also took the GitHub repository as, as basis for, for uh, starting points and then uh, develop their own requirements, <coughs> solutions. And uh, yeah, so there's some, some feedback um, we got and uh, then also some um, some new uh, GitHub repositories uh, and ideas and solutions um, grow out of that. And uh, then there's this new OData, SAP OData connector, which uh, is really promising. I mean, we, we could do OData before, but now we have this SAP specific and, <clears throat> and this, this makes it much more convenient. And I think the, it, it, it lowers the bar to start with O data services. So that, that is, is really, really cool. So um, yeah, I would like to, maybe I can start sharing. Okay, perfect, yeah. J just to um, to put some additional information around this, the SAP O data connector is currently still in preview. So if you want to to get access and um, reach out to us, I, I can also put in the, the email address um, in the description. But as you said, I, I'm also really, really happy about the SAP O data connector because it <clears throat> really simplifies the way how you can access um, SAP O data services um, from, from the Power Platform. And it, it's really cool what you can do there. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely, yeah. So by the way, I have put this presentation also on GitHub. Yeah, so actually what Perfect. I'm showing here, the PowerPoint, you can get it from from GitHub, and uh, all the demos I, I I show are as videos in this presentation. So everyone is free to um, use it, download, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe a bit of from the motivation side. Yeah, why why do we do this? I mean, to remind Microsoft mission is to empower every person and every organization um, on the planet to achieve more. And and I think this this is really. Um, from my perspective, a powerful way to to really um, be successful with that. Uh, it it really helps a lot. And um, so, just to recap, so these are um, six. But you're not yet sharing your slides, right? Oh, I'm I'm sorry for that. Let me. Yeah, now it's coming up. Yeah, okay. perfect. Now there we can go. see it. Okay, very good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> 
Yeah, so these are the six solution. The the first three one we discussed already in previous sessions. So maybe as a recap, uh, we quickly jump over it, but then mm -hmm. we have a look on the three new ones. Mm -hmm. So, and this is yeah one learning I I mentioned already. So the <clears throat> um, here the the third one ask anything mm -hmm. about sub data. Is is really a cool solution, but not every customer actually has the need to 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 discuss over uh, multiple tables. Yeah, and then there is also uh, the Azure function that we need and and uh, some Python coding, and um, yeah, so it this leads us to this uh, item five. So there is a sub table copilot which is leveraging the SAP table connect the um yeah the table connector from the power platform which is then easier to start with yeah and and uh, so based on this feedback customer feedback uh, we have also this and also i i discussed it the other day with a partner they also have uh, they they use this uh, exactly in a similar way so that that's really really cool to see the momentum and um but um, um yeah the, the fourth point comes <laughs> comes before the SAP product copilot. So to, um, th this en enables connectivity to SAP uh, products. I mean, this is what we do in the demo. But please, everyone should be free, uh, free your mind. And this every O data service can be used basically. Yeah? And and the cool thing is, uh, everyone can download the solution. From, from my GitHub repository, import it in Power, Power Platform, and then easily start. And then you can just adapt, put another URL, which is referencing to a different data set, and then, and then you can really, really leverage. And, and yeah, we will look into, into this one. And then um, um, I also wanted to show uh, basically a real Power App, not only co-pilots or chatbots at the end, but also how an app could uh, could look like uh, that is connected to SAP data through the O data. So that's the agenda for today. <clears throat> Perfect. Good. Sounds good. Yeah. The first three steps. Let's go quickly over it. So this this is a repository chat uh, in Teams with an open AI with a chat GPT like experience. Here in this case, open AI. So many customers in the meanwhile have possibilities to use open ai but this is just another approach to to um, enable every customer in 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 the uh, sorry every um, user in an enterprise in a company to use chat gpt like functionality but with open ai that means securely and safely and then you can business data here's some examples here specific maybe secret code that you do not want to share anywhere else or write help to write a product about a new product. So just a few examples how you then can safely and privately use uh, OpenAI to um, yeah, improve your work. The, the second one that uh, we discussed already is um, self-services leveraging the SAP ERP connector. So with RFC and BAPIs, you connect through the on-premises data gateway, and then you can literally uh, do and expose everything where you have an SAP, an, an RFC, and a BAPI. You can expose this uh, in Teams, and you can um, enable end users to do those SAP activities in Teams. And um, yeah, I, this is, I think, quite quite nice because at the end you can then also give any uh, new users or anyone this capability because you have open ai in the game so even if a user is has no sap training doesn't know how to how to do the work he can ask anything and open ai will help uh, the user to complete the work so in our demo uh, we have three examples SAP user self-services. So when users in SAP have some troubles to do their work, so that this is one self-service. <clears throat> and um, they could check jobs or they can communicate plant maintenance. These are just three examples. These are more from SAP basis perspective, but you can, again, free your mind and 
use it for any business process uh, you can think of where users can benefit having it in teams because it's repetitive, it's always the same, or they, they need AI help so they can complete the work. So that's a good good approach for that. I, I don't go through the demos. We have it already yeah, yeah. and the, the presentation uh, everyone can download and you can you can click then here and then you will see the demo how it works. Yeah, but I I I um, skip over this here for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. um, then we had this fancy talk to your SAP data, which we uh, already yeah, presented and, and showed extensively. And uh, so this is uh, leveraging here a function app to enable connectivity to, to the HANA database directly. And OK, so if you want to use it, you need to learn function app and Python to some extent, mm -hmm. not fully. But um, again, the feedback was, hey, not every customer requires to talk about many tables. And then we come um, soon to the table connector. So here are also videos for, for this one. And um, maybe, yeah, let's let's, 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 let's first of all discuss the table connector because it fits <clears throat> to the, to what I just mentioned. So, so the table connector, same design principle. So we have the, the data gateway already, maybe for the SAP self services, then we can easily leverage it. Uh, and with the ERP table connector, um, use this. And I would like to show here with a little animation. So the user asks a question, OpenAI, okay, receives this, maybe has not all information to, to, to go to SAP, then goes back to the, to the user. User finalizes all the information, OpenAI, okay, I have it. I send it now with a JSON back and the Flow recognizes, okay, I have a JSON, I can call the LP connector, goes to, um, to SAP. The LP <clears throat> SAP returns the information from, from, from this connection. It goes back to OpenAI and, and, then, and then basically um, OpenAI um, improves the, the, the whole format and also mm -hmm. um, can <clears throat> analyze the output from SAP and then really gives a very nicely formatted, um, easy understandable uh, summary of the whole discussion and the final result. So that's 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 really. And uh, okay, so let's go to the next. And here we see this is something <coughs> where we can quickly have a look on the video. So yeah, um, you can use business process like BANF or so. But here I simply used I have the flight demo data yep, anyway, perfect. so I use the the uh, SPFLI table, and this table contains all the flight connections. Yeah, there are in total 50 flight connections, so that's the question I have asked. Then I ask, hey, which airlines are there, which airports? And then yeah, we see the nicely formatted feedback, and um, maybe which airline operates flights from Hong Kong. Now you see it, it connects, gets the information from SAP, it, uh, OpenAI prepares the answer, and I don't get a table feedback. I really get, you know, the 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 the, the um, nicely uh, explained response from OpenAI based on what the SAP data um, gave back. Yeah. So which flights arrived next day? Uh, what other example do we have here? And yeah, also to show flights from Hamburg. Yeah, there, there are no flights from Hamburg. Yeah, so normally you would get an error or maybe just an empty result. But here, OpenAI sees okay, there is no result from the connector. That means there is there is no uh, flight connections from Hamburg, and so on. Yeah, you can ask any anything that you have about data in this table. You can you can ask here. Yeah. And, and just to highlight that again, so you have not developed how the response should look like that here's a, it's, it's just a sentence, here's a table, here's a whatever, but yeah. you're basically handing this over to uh, via a prompt to the Azure OpenAI um, large language model, and it then formats um, the result. And then you, you just um, uh, display the result back in, in the Teams message. Yeah, absolutely. And um, my maybe we can also have a look into the flow. Yeah, so that's the sub table flow. And mm -hmm. if someone downloads it from GitHub and imports it, he he can see exactly this flow. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, there is the the system system prompt one. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So here you see exactly, uh, I, I put again the schema, I explain OpenAI what I what I want, how it mm -hmm. behaves. I even give one data set as an example. So this improves the understanding of OpenAI. I explain the process, what's happening. I tell how the response, I'm expecting the response. And what's important is that I get a JSON as a response. Yep. So then the flow knows, okay, now there is a JSON and with this JSON, I go to the connector. And then there are some further instructions. And this is then again, the fine tuning. Yeah? So when, when you test the solution before handing it over to users, um, in the testing, you find out certain things. Yeah? For example, um, the city Hong Kong is there as Hong Kong. Yeah? So th this mm -hmm. is the only thing where, where I had to, to advise um, AI that uh, <clears throat> Hong Kong is in in, in the database, uh, yeah, listed like I that. Yeah, so th this was not obvious. Or, or another thing is uh, um, uh, another interesting. Yeah, keep your explanation very short. I don't need, yeah, many many uh, lengthy explanations and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then. Really nice. Back, yeah. Go back to the presentation. So then uh, that was the table copilot. And now let me briefly show this architecture for the uh, for, for the similar copilot capability, but now using the O data connector. And uh, I have three demos recorded. So you can use it, for example, um, so here we see the capabilities, yeah, choose the right product, assist in ordering, provide details of a product or update an existing product. I mean, I put it here all in one demo, but maybe the, the one who is ordering should not be able to change the prices, yeah, but uh, this is just showcasing here uh, as a demo. So mm -hmm. I want to, for example, I, I want to be more, um, and OpenAI sees, okay, a beamer is actually also a projector. Yeah? So it connects to SAP, gets all the, all the products that matches my request. And um, now I can chat about this, the, the, the specs that are also returned yeah? and, um, and so on. So it's it, really nice. It, You're also fetching the picture and everything really cool. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it helps me. Then also I can have a conversation really um, freely about the specs, yeah. And mm -hmm. um... and what is also cool, ju just again to highlight this, um, for example, here, please update the price to seven 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 or whatever. Um, you are you you always have the context, so yeah. which I think is also also really important. So um, um, when, when you say the, the new price is seven seven seven. Um, you you also pass the history so it knows okay we are talking actually about um this specific product and it knows that um now i need to update the price for this specific product id yeah exactly and uh also would like to show how you can maybe use it as a as a bot or copilot for for users actually want to order something um yeah, so we see here again the same product and now I explain I don't need 3D, my distance six mm -hmm. meter, I want full HD. And then obviously the 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 Beamer B2 is the one that that is fitting my my requirements. So. Really nice. I mean I mean here these are all just dummy data, right? Out of the EPM model from from SAP that we're using here. Yeah, but exactly. um, theoretically, if this would be real data, you could even combine the inputs then with information from from the internet with um, product specifications that you can find on on the 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 manufacturer's website or something like that yeah absolutely or how other users rated the product mm -hmm. uh, something mm -hmm. like this yeah and um what was this here um I'm... yeah oh, oh to add a new product to, to add a product yeah so yeah, i can simply Copy paste. I mean, here we can think about using the power platform and maybe drop a PDF, yeah, from the mail I got, and uh, so you can also use this to 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 add. So add in this add a new product, would it already be? Um, would it detect that, for example, if the name is missing, that it would say, look, uh, I already have quite a lot of information, but the name is currently missing. 
Yeah, I think the 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 SAP ERP connector would would send back the mm -hmm. error message. Mm -hmm. I, I did I didn't test okay. it yeah, yeah, so no, no, no so problem. detailed, yeah. but but you will get an error, yeah, because you um. I mean, if, most obviously, if the product ID already exists, you cannot add it. Um, if if the description is empty, I think you can maybe uh, add it because the description is not um, mandatory. The product name it, it depends on the SAP data yeah, model, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but I I don't know the the details here. Yeah. No, no problem. The thing that I wanted to allude to basically was when um when I played around with creating a purchase order or or or, or ordering something. What I found always really interesting, if you if I just ask, I would like to order this and that, that it knew in order to complete an order, I need the quantity. So yeah. it asked me for the quantity. And I, I, th that was something that I found really, really powerful. Because again, I didn't write one single line of code for this. This was all part of the model. So it, it knew if I order something, there are certain parameters that I need on top of this. Yeah. And that's how how it it then also asked me um, additional questions on on missing functionalities. Yeah, and I mean this to avoid such an error. I mean mm -hmm. it it would be the right thing to tell OpenAI in mm -hmm. the instructions. Hey, if you want to order this one, these are mandatory information. So that OpenAI yeah. Open will not create a JSON if information is missing and mm -hmm. first ask the user so to, to avoid errors uh, in, in the whole process chain. No? Mm -hmm. so, so I guess if you look at your flow that you had created, I, I, I guess um, most of the knowledge went into the system prompt, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that's that's the key point. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and you know what? I mean, the system prompt. I have my ideas. I write it, but mm -hmm. then I I also go to OpenAI and ask, dear OpenAI, is this a good system prompt? Is oh, nice. anything clear Be before I really activate it? I mean, I'm I'm using AI there, but I should also use AI to create the whole thing and um, make it precise and less error prone and and so yeah that's what i did so this system prompt i i basically copy pasted it i explained to open AI what i want to achieve hey this is the system prompt tell me is this good enough and uh, really and, uh, cool i i yeah. always get feedback hey this is not 100 percent clear hey this formulation make this more precise or or, or something like this yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really yeah, nice. and and what's also nice is you you can put here the um yeah, that that's the action here on top get my profile and then I can put here the name and also the sub user ID for example here in 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 the flow so that that mm -hmm. means OpenAI uh, it, it knows who it is talking to and I can it it, it approaches me with my first name which makes it mm -hmm. whole much um. Convenient, yeah. Yeah, no, Personal. no, you're right. Yeah. And and now that you're saying this, I, I remember it was it was saying in one of the videos, um, um, uh, Nestor, you need to do X, Y, Z, and and yeah, yeah. It knew the context of yeah. of the user. Interesting, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, maybe let's have a quick look into the table. This table copilot. <clears throat> Again, because there we have actually two OpenAI calls. Yeah? Um, the first mm -hmm. one is, yeah, the first interaction we saw, and then after the SAP returns the information, I'm still in the same flow. So um, maybe there's a way to do a loop in the flow, but I'm I'm, I'm not sure. So to I actually just configured a second HTTP call in the flow, and mm -hmm. this has a different system prompt. This has the system prompt, hey, um, we have this conversation, we have the SAP data received, mm -hmm. um, please analyze the whole thing and 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 uh, respond to the original question of the user based on the SAP data. Yeah? And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is what we see here at the end. We get we get an, an an action. The action is there is no action, so it just returns. Or we have the action to to read the table, and then we read the table. 
<laughs> here the rest is all variable handling. Yeah? So we have mm -hmm. uh, iterations of conversation which we which we have to put. We have to pass the JSON and 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 then there is a, a condition. For example, if if SAP has returned something or yeah. or not, yeah. And um, and here is is then the second call. And here basically, yeah, I just call again. Mm -hmm. um, it's with, with now with a different, with an additional message, and then yeah, the answer is returned yeah. based on on the SAP data. So I think this is really nice functionality to to introduce. Yeah, and yeah, so far to the co-pilots, and um, yeah, maybe a, a short deviation to show the GitHub. Um, so this is my, my GitHub um, area. And so the sub product co-pilot, which we showed is, is here. And we have a full description. How, yeah, so we, here we see again how it looks like, the architecture, the prerequisites we need, the setup. Um, so the Azure OpenAI services is, is a prerequisite. So some prerequisites are explained. And here you can download the solution. Then you go to this Power App website. You import the solution. Then we have to make our own connections because, I mean, um, I, I, I don't share the connection, my user password and so on. But uh, yeah, that, this is what you can, you can use. And you can enter. The, for example, you can do the um, you can use for for mm -hmm. first ideation mm -hmm. piloting thing. You can f use the ES5 system. Well, knowing it's yep. sometimes down, you you get more often errors, connection errors or so. But for piloting, is is absolutely worth uh, uh, doing using this one. And then the HTTP connector. Everyone has to use uh, enter his own URL mm -hmm. and own key. And then you're you're ready to go. Yeah, the copilot itself is also imported, but need to be published. Mm -hmm. And um, so here to publish, and then we can open it to into Teams. And uh, yeah, then basically you can you can use it here in in Teams directly. So it's Great. yeah. I mean this this part is really easy and um, okay for sure. Um, the prerequisites might take some time. Yeah, you need, you need the Azure subscription, deploy the Azure OpenAI service, and and these kind of things. Yeah, for sure. No, but, but, but I think that, that that's really really cool because even if you look at the prerequisites, so um, you you obviously need the Power Platform, and there is a free Power Platform development plan that you yeah. can get. Yeah. For the Azure subscription, there is an, ah, yeah, you even write this, there is an Azure trial that you can use and you even get free credits. The only thing is for Azure OpenAI, you need to actually enable um, Azure OpenAI for you. So so um, I think you, you still need to sign up um, to uh, to really get access to it. But but this yeah. also actually really works with your Azure trial instance. Ab and then, absolutely, um, yeah. The ES5 system, this is publicly available. You can also register for free. So basically, Everyone can do this. What what you just said. Now now the, I I think there there's one last question um for for me at least um can you say anything about the costs um if I if I call all these Azure OpenAI services do you have any I I, I think you have some 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 insights on on the costs for for your scenario yeah absolutely so I mean this scenario takes the GPT four thirty two k model and this one is not everywhere available so you mm -hmm. need to de deploy this service uh, in in some us regions france canada so the details are behind this link mm -hmm. so this one it costs more than gpt3 yep. but if if you calculate the cost for 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 thousand tokens i guess uh, it is one cent or so uh, or yeah. two cent. I don't. I don't recall. But no, but no. The but point, it is really, the, really low. Actually, the, the and... point is there for um, anyone who wants to start doing this here. The, the costs are neglectable from my perspective. It's the, there are only costs then if you have thousands of users using it, and and it's really then in production and heavily used. But still, then I, I did already estimates for for customers. I think the the added value outweighs the cost 
oil factors. I think the, the, there's so much value and 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 the cost for for an open AI call is is really it's really low. I mean, for, for me, honestly, um, and, and and that's what what I want to do, get to actually that that the costs are um, really low, especially if you if you get started in such a scenario where you have, I don't know, a, a few hundred calls. Um, uh, maybe if you're really using it um, extensively, but I, I think the the value of learning how to work with these system prompts this is this is so important, and that that's also what what I experienced myself. The first prompts that I wrote were were very very basic, and then um, I mean we have also have a great community where, where we exchange um, prompts uh, and, and and see this is working, this is not so so well working, and but by just trying it out you learn so much on what does it take to um, to create a good prompt I, I have to admit i have not yet asked gtp like what you said to to really ask gpt to create or improve my prompt mm. I, I definitely need to to try this out but yeah. but simply by 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 looking at other prompts by trying out um some some ideas on yourself like that, that also really being explicit like what you want um, in these, there are so many things that you can learn by just playing around with this. And in this context, like having um, uh, Copilot Studio, creating a nice chatbot, you you not only learn, but you have a nice experience as well. So so that's what I. Everyone should get get started. And I think here with your solution on 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 GitHub, we'll put obviously the the, the link also in the show notes. To get started is really really easy, and I think everyone should should take your solution, get started with this, and and and, and play around with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I see it no exactly problem. like you say. And um, yeah, the last topic for today is then to um, this this <coughs> this app. Yeah, so leaving a little bit all the time the copilots and 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 chatting functionality, but also show how easily we can connect uh, an a self-built app with OData to SAP. And um, so we see here the the app on the side mm -hmm. and it, um, it the app can also call a flow. We have in the flow the OData connector, which is then again connecting to SAP. And yeah, so also here the link to the GitHub repository, you can download, you can, everyone can easily start with it. And um, yeah, I mean that that uh, um, is something I would like to show. Uh, I have also a video again. Yeah, in the presentation is the video, but let me maybe uh, show present this in live mode if I get to it. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. So let's let's start the app. And um, yeah, Holger, I have connected it to to your uh, SAP demo environment. Oh, good. <laughs> so it is it is now. Um, more reliable than connecting to ES5. So the first thing someone mm. has to do is here basically refresh the data from SAP. And um, after that, we have here all the categories. So we can already um, go with the categories and and um, uh, maybe let's go to the accessories. And yeah, so oh, I try I created here uh, one 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 product. <laughs> So let's let's maybe delete it. Yeah. So I delete this. Okay. So Holger, I, I, I will give this to colleagues to to for demoing with customers. So if 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 the if they delete more and more the the um, products, I hope I hope you have a way to reload them back. We to can the regenerate <laughs> the data. Yeah. No no problem. <laughs> okay. That's that's good. Yeah. So maybe um, let's just pick. Ah, oh, we were talking about the the projectors previously. Yeah. So we have here the the projectors, and uh, let's let's set here the seven seven seven. So I go on on edit, and I set the seven seven seven, and I update. And uh, let me go into the SAP system. No, I don't want to leave here, and. Uh, me go into the SAP system so that you can uh, can see um, <clears throat> that's true. That's not a fake. That exactly. That, really that, that, that we SAP. can that we really really the update. Nestor is real guy. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. Sorry for that. It's a generic uh, user, um, but uh, anyway, yeah. it's it's just a demo environment. So we are. Uh, so where's the products? Here, here we have it, right? Um, mm -hmm. The Fury was, screen with the product. What, yeah. What was the? Uh, uh, maybe before we go in here, what I also would like to show is, I mean, the the search functionality is. This is so cool. I like it much more than with SAP. Um, so you, I can I can search here for for the product name and and you see yeah. But I can also push, search for the for the product uh, ID uh, okay. for the product uh, ID. Yeah, or, or I can I can search maybe for the resolution. So things in the text. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is really cool. This this uh, functionality, and what where I'm really impressed also. The, the portability. Yeah? So let me change here to to an iPhone, and now I'm 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 here. Let's let's show, show to the projectors again. So now I can I can see here the projectors, and I click on it. So I see here the details. I can here change it uh, change it in the same same way. Yeah? Let's make this to 500, and uh, so it's it's updating in SAP. And now we go to SAP, and yeah, we see. You see like this, so we have just changed it to 500, and I think the other one, yeah, we changed it to 77. Yeah. So here you see how, how this can be can be updated, and I mean this is this is the solution I think uh, for mobile uh, mm -hmm. users, for mo mobile workers. Here is in the GitHub repository, everyone can download it and uh, import it in their Power Platform environment and and start started yeah so you have a starting point i think this is, makes it really easy and and um if, if you're start new to power platform it i mean it, it becomes um for sure it, there's always a learning curve curve but i think with this it, it, it's really easy to learn because you see you have all the functionality that you might want to have when interacting with sap data so you can here easily check how everything is done for example how is the refresh done you yeah? so the refresh is uh, is done here? Yeah, I ca I call I call uh, I call the flow here. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I write it to the collection. So here you can really see how this is done and and maybe use this as a starting point and then change it just to um, yeah uh, to what you want. Yeah, really really impressive. Yeah, that's it so far. And um, and for, even for this up, I mean this is cool. There there is so little prerequisites. Yeah, power platform trial. Um, Azure trial. Actually, while thinking, you, I you just wrote it Azure yesterday. Trial, actually, we don't. Right? We don't need Azure here. Yep. We can. We can just use the ES5. So I yep. need to. I, I can remove it. So it, you just have two prerequisites and can very quickly start it. Download the solution. Import it. Import it there, and then and then you have an app connected to SAP data. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you even had some troubleshooting tips at the end. If I saw. Oh this yeah, I, I always I always add this because it, I think is really is really helpful. I mean, yeah. What can go wrong? Yeah, it's when something goes wrong here. It's it's the the flow that is failing, and the mm -hmm. troubleshooting is go into the flow, check check, find the flow that failed, check the error message. Here you have the error message, and yeah. from that you very likely know. How to how to proceed? Troubleshooting. The problem is always in front of computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's it already. No, Michael. Thank you so much. That was that was really really fantastic. And and you know I I am a huge fan of the Power Platform. So um, seeing these scenarios always makes me extremely nice. happy. And it, it's it's really cool what you can do in these in these scenarios. And I like the combination of. Power Platform, Azure Open AI, it's, it, it's really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Michael, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure um, we will have you back on the show, um, maybe sure. with some other new cool scenarios. Um, but for now, I, I hope um, everyone who watches this show goes to your GitHub repository, downloads the solution, and follows uh, the steps to implement it. Absolutely. Great. Thank you Perfect. for having me. Yeah, thank you thank so you much. Bye. bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.